This has happened a few times already now. So I'm thinking about buying a piece of camera gear, but I don't pull the trigger right away. And I keep thinking about it, you know? And then all of a sudden, a company sends me an email that they want to send me that exact piece of camera gear out of nowhere. And it happened again. I was thinking about buying a cage and top handle for my Sony a7S III, but I wasn't sure which one, so I kept thinking about it. And then all of a sudden, Small Rig sends me an email that they want to send me a cage and top handle. I mean, what the heck? That's so weird. So yeah, now I'm thinking about a million dollars, like 24 seven, but no luck so far. <clears throat> Okay, so there's a reason why I'm telling you all this. It's because I want you to know that I was actually planning on buying a camera cage and top handle myself, but again, a company beat me to it, and Small Rig sent me their professional cage kit for my Sony a7S III, before I even had a chance to buy one myself. So this is not a regular review video, because usually when a company sends me something, it's something that I'm interested in, but not planning on buying myself. In this case, you know, it changes the whole dynamics of this review video. Does that even make sense? I hope you understand what I'm trying to say here, because I feel like the more I try to explain, the more confusing it gets. Ugh. Um, anyway, let's talk about this cage, and then later I'll tell you why I think you also may need a cage if you're into handheld shooting. Okay, so the Small Rig Pro Cage Kit for the Sony a7S III. Item number is 3181. That's what you should look for if you want exactly this one. Now, what's so special about it? It's a magnesium aluminum, so it's lighter than the regular aluminum cages. It feels great, it fits perfectly, and the top handle, I love that one finger goes here, separate from the others. It feels a lot more grippy and confident. And all the buttons, of course, are still accessible. There's also an HDMI clamp in the kit in case you want to mount an external monitor. Now, the reason why I hadn't bought a cage and top handle myself yet is because I wasn't sure which one, because I didn't want it to be too big and bulky. But this one isn't. It's a very, very slim design. I feel like I can definitely leave it on even when I'm not using the top handle, you know, when I'm just shooting photos, because it feels good, even for my small hands. So, I like how it feels, I like how it looks. If I have to say one negative thing maybe, it's the red logo. It's a bit too in your face, for my taste, but I'm being very picky now. Okay, so, um, like I said, I like a lightweight, minimal setup. So, my intention is not to mount a bunch of different accessories on this cage. That's not why I wanted a cage. But you definitely can, of course, there's plenty of mounts and threads cold shoe. I'm sure you won't have any problems mounting your accessories, but if that's what you want to do, then make sure that you have all the mounts and threads where you want them to be, because I've noticed that this cage doesn't have threads here on the front, and some cages do have threads there. Now, if you do want this cage, then I'm pretty sure there's a solution for that, but you know, just so you know, every cage is different. But now that I know how this one feels and because it's such a nice slim design, I feel like this is the one that I should have bought. But you know, I don't have to anymore because perks of being a YouTuber, I guess. Um, anyway, now why was I planning to buy a cage and top handle in the first place? That's what you all want to know, right? So look, here's the thing. When you're shooting handheld with a mirrorless camera like this, then Unless you have some kind of stabilization, it usually doesn't look very good. I mean, it depends. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. The problem usually is those micro shakes, you know, micro jitters, I don't know what they call them, but it's all the same, those little It looks really ugly and it's because you're shooting like this with such a small and light camera. And you can get rid of those micro shakes by turning on in-camera stabilization and IBIS and you know all those things. But the thing is, you still won't get a nice natural 
handheld look. The handheld look that you see in movies, for example. It just looks like stabilized handheld footage. You know what I mean? And you also get some weird jerky movement sometimes when you're shooting a fast action scene with stabilization turned on. It, it doesn't look very good. And then if you have insanely good stabilization, like my Sony a7S III, then you lose the handheld look altogether. So, you know, there's a problem with handheld look and turning stabilization on. It, it seems like it doesn't it doesn't go together. Now, for vlogging and run and gun filmmaking, that's fine. I have no problem with it because I use stabilization all the time, but for a more serious project like a short film or a commercial, I want a nicer handheld look. I want that cinema handheld look. It's also shaky, but it's good shaky. It's like a stable kind of shaky. I don't know how to explain it. You just have to try to stay with me here. And that's not because those cinema cameras have IBIS and in-camera stabilization. No, because they don't. First of all, they pick the right lens. Wider is better for handheld shooting, but also the weight and size of those cameras and how you have to hold them. All that makes that they get a better handheld look without stabilization and all those things. You know, a mirrorless camera, you hold it like this. It's tiny, it's light, and all those short jerky movements, that, that's what gives you that handheld mirrorless look. The bad kind of handheld look. I mean, it's not the bad kind, but I hope you understand what I'm trying to say here. Again, difficult to explain. And adding a cage and top handle, first of all, adds a little bit of extra weight. That's nice, even though this is a lightweight cage, but it still adds some weight. But you also hold it from the top and then gravity will help you to get rid of those micro shakes because your camera gets pulled down and it really changes the look of your handheld footage. Of course, you have to turn all stabilization off. That, that's the key here. But it's a way to get a little bit closer to that cinema handheld look. Of course, ideally, you should rig up your mirrorless camera like a cinema camera, add a lot of weight and accessories and big and bulky. Then you'll get even closer to that look. But of course, I want to keep it as compact as possible. You can also buy just the top handle and mount it on the hot shoe of your camera. But I felt like adding the cage makes it a little bit more durable, sturdy, it adds a little bit more weight and, you know, plus, I can experiment by adding some extra weights on the bottom or on the sides, if I feel like it needs it. So now you know, a top handle and cage is what you need if you want to improve your handheld shooting, if you want to get rid of that mirrorless handheld look, that stabilized handheld look. But I've said it a million times, it's all very subjective. So let me know what you think. Do you agree or not? That's fine. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.